Welcome to Your Healthy Kitchen from Dignity Health Yavapai Regional Medical Center. Welcome to Dignity Health, YRMC's Your Healthy Kitchen. I'm your host, Rita Carey Rubin. So it's officially summer and seasonal produce is starting to shift. The first cucumbers and summer squashes appeared at the market and in my CSA share from Whipstone Farm a few weeks ago. And they're just a hint of what's to come, but there are still plenty of spring-like vegetables available too. So I love the shoulder seasons at the Prescott Farmers Market, where our local farmers are between spring and summer harvests right now. And it's exciting to see the new items that are available, like sweet bulbs of fennel, bunches of basil, and summery squash. And it's also a little sad to say goodbye to my favorite cool weather crops, like baby greens, chicory mixes, and green garlic. So I like to stock up on these while I can. It's like giving good friends a long hug before they leave on an extended vacation. And I know that all my favorites will be back soon. So I have a sample of what's fresh at the market here with me today, including some sweet bulbs of fennel, spring onions, fresh herbs like dill, basil, and chives, some ruby red beets, crispy young carrots, savory salad turnips, big heads of lettuce and escarole and frisee as well, spinach, baby kale, some Swiss chard, and there's so much more. So let's get cooking. I have two recipes to share with you today that feature two of the more unusual vegetables uh, available at the market right now. So one is fennel and the other is Japanese salad turnips. So let's start with the fennel. This, um, isn't that beautiful? Uh, fennel's in a big family of vegetables, herbs, and spices. And they include things like carrots, dill, cumin, coriander, parsley, cilantro, caraway, anise, celery, and parsnips. And you recognize all of these plants in this family because they have umbrella-like flowers. And you've probably seen a wild relative called Queen Anne's Lace or wild carrots growing along the sides of roads. So fennel has a mildly sweet, little bit anise-like flavor, and it's really good to eat either cooked or raw. And when you're preparing a dish, it goes well with all the herbs and spices that are in its family, as well as many others. So first, um, it's really good raw, and if you eat it raw, be sure to slice it or shave it into thin slices um, using a really sharp knife, or if you're not confident with your knife skills, uh, use a mandolin. A mandolin's a wonderful tool for, for making thin sliced uh, vegetables and fruits. Uh, the reason why you wanna shave it so thinly is because it, it has a texture, it's similar to celery, but a little bit denser. So when you have big chunks of raw fennel, it's a little, it's not really pleasant to chew, <laughs> but it's really good if you, if you thin it, uh, slice it thinly and uh, that actually brings out more of the flavor as well. So I use, I, I shave fennel onto just tossed salads and I really love it combined with citrus fruit like oranges and grapefruit. I, I like to make a salad of citrus, fennel, some chopped walnuts and a little or fresh herbs, any kind, and then some uh, vinaigrette made with lemon and olive oil. Super, super simple. You can also cook fennel by sauteing it or baking it or braising it, which is what we're gonna do right now. So a braise is a wonderful way to cook all sorts of foods, uh, fruits, vegetables, meats, chicken, fish, and it's a moist cooking method, but you start off by browning the main ingredients, which I have done already in here. So this is fennel, just sliced thin, and some onions with some olive oil, a little salt and pepper, and some fennel seed, which is hiding over here. There we go. So with fennel, you can actually use all of the parts of the plant, the fronds, the bulb, the seeds. So this is nicely browned. <clears throat> some things are a little crispy, and that's, that's just what you want. You want the, um, the flavor to come through. And I'll show you how to slice the fennel in a sec, but first I wanna add the rest of the ingredients for the braise. So once you have your, your uh, ingredients br browned, I'm adding a little bit of tomato paste. This is a couple tablespoons. I'm gonna stir that around. 
And then I'll add some nice big cloves of garlic. And I think I'll put one more in. This recipe actually comes from a cookbook by Deborah Madison called Vegetable Literacy. It's one of my favorite vegetable cookbooks. Is it's, it's unique in so many ways. She goes through all the different families of vegetables and talks about what goes with what and how to cook them all in just really simple, beautiful, delicious ways. So I've got garlic in there. I'm gonna put in some fresh, uh, fresh thyme. So this is from my garden. You can uh, use dry thyme if you have it, just use a little bit less. So I'm using about a teaspoon of fresh thyme. It's really easy to just peel the, the leaves off of thyme. You just run your finger along the stalk and they peel right off. And if you get little bits of stem in there, no worries, it's very tender. And next we need to add a liquid. So this is just water that I warmed up first. So it's nice not to add, it's nice to add warm broth or water to, to your braise so it doesn't cool the pan down and you can keep everything cooking. So about a cup and a half of water. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit. So I wanna bring this to a boil and then it will come down to a simmer. And it looks a little soupy right now but as it cooks, it will concentrate and will form a really nice thick sauce. And I'm adding just a little bit more flavor. So I have a, this bundle of fennel fronds and some fresh thyme. I'm just gonna nestle that into the pan, sort of like you do with soup. You know, if you're putting in some thyme or sage or parsley, it just adds layers because we're trying to flavor water essentially and every little bit helps. So it's starting to come to a boil and once it gets to a boil, I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer and cover it and just let it cook for a little while. You can also put this in the oven. So with, with a braise, you can finish the cooking either on the stove top or in an oven. So super simple way to prepare. Like I said, lots of, lots of different vegetables and meats. If you wanted to add some a chicken to this dish. You could do a braise with the chicken in that in that pot as well. You would just brown your chicken ahead of time and put it in there with the, the browned fennel and onion and just cook everything together. It'd be really tasty. So it's it's boiling. I'm just gonna turn the heat down a little bit. And then I'll cover it and we'll let it cook. So fennel, so it is, like I said, it's a beautiful, I just love fennel. It's such a beautiful vegetable. And I hate to throw away these gorgeous fronds. I, uh, you know, I just wanna use all the parts. So fennel fronds you can use as a garnish. You could make some broth with the fennel fronds for soup, like a nice fennel leek potato soup. Maybe throw some chicken in there, it would be yummy. And uh, you can make some tea, which I did yesterday. I put some fennel fronds and some fennel seed in my teapot and just let it simmer for about five, six minutes or steep. And it made a really nice soothing cup of herbal tea with a little lemon, really calming. It's also really good for your digestion. It's a digestif, so it helps, uh, helps your digestion. So it'd be a wonderful way to end a meal. So I just wanna show you how to slice the fennel for this recipe. So I'm just going to cut off the stalks, but I'm gonna save them because I'll figure out some way to use them. And if your fennel bulb is a little beat up, sometimes they do, the outer leaves get a little browned or, or, or beat up a little bit. I'm just gonna slice a little bit off the bottom here and simply peel off that that outer layer until I like the look of all those uh, bottom, the bottoms of the stalks is basically what, you, what you're looking at here. So then I'm gonna slice this little guy in half lengthwise, like that. And then slice each of these halves into about quarter inch slices, keeping the bottom of the bulb intact 
because that will keep all those, that's a little too thin, they will keep all the pieces together like this. So you can cook the pieces just like that. When you eat it, you may have to use a knife and a fork to cut out the little, the little bit of the stem that might be a little tougher. I just turned my stove off, excuse me. There we go. So just slicing it about a quarter inch thick. And remember the thinner or the, the slices are, the quicker they cook. And that's it, that's it. So, oh, it smells so nice. It's, it's got this lovely, fresh, slightly anise-y, licorice-y kind of smell. So that's fennel. Uh, the next veggie that I want to talk about is our Japanese salad turnips. And that, this is what they look like. I have to admit that Japanese salad turnips and I, it was not love at first sight or bite. <laughs> um, I really had to play with recipes to figure out how to prepare them in a way that I really enjoyed. And the last couple weeks, I've been diving in, and I have found a lot of different ideas on the internet, also from the folks at Whipstone Farm, which is where these come from. And so let's, let me share with you a little bit about these, these lovely veggies. So they are in the family, the brassica, brassica family. And the brassica family family includes lots of the usual nutrition suspects like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, collards, Brussels sprouts, and kale. And these little guys are versatile. They can also be eaten raw or cooked. And the greens are actually one of my favorite parts. They are super tasty, so don't throw them away. I just saute them with some garlic and olive oil and maybe a pinch of crushed red pepper. Um, it's a great alternative to, to spinach. They, they have a much richer, fuller flavor, and they're way more nutritious as well. Uh, even if the greens look a little beat up, there's a lot of critters that like to munch on them, <laughs> finches and that sort of thing. So, but they're fine to eat. Just rinse them off, and, and they're really delicious. So don't, don't worry if your vegetables are not uh, picture perfect. They are still delicious and good to eat. So let's talk about salad turnips. When you eat them raw, you don't have to peel them actually with, with any way that you eat them. The skin is very tender and they have a really kind of, a, they have a mildly, mildly turnipy flavor, but they're kind of sweet too. And just like the fennel, if you can cut them, cut them thinly, I, I think that the eating them is much more pleasant. It's a nicer, nicer feel and they're, they're just tastier. So if you eat these cold, you can just chop them, slice them, put them in a salad, like a toss salad. You can turn them into maybe like a quick pickle, like you do cucumbers, slice them and sprinkle them with some salt, put some vinegar on them and let them steep a little bit, really tasty. Add some, some hot stuff if you want, some chilies, they're really good. Or do like a Japanese style salad where you put, put some rice vinegar and some sesame seeds, sesame oil on top, very nice. And uh, cooked, it's actually pretty fun. You can roast these in the oven with some olive oil, salt and pepper. They, get, they caramelize and they get really tender. And then one of my favorite new ways to eat these, I, I did this last night, is slice them and cook them in some olive oil and butter with a little bit of salt and pepper. And then you mix in a little bit of white miso. Oh, top it with some chopped uh, green onion. They're <laughs> really, really good. Uh, so a couple ways to eat salad turnips. And the last way is a recipe I'll share with you right now is a kind of a spin on a Waldorf salad. But let me check my braise here. All right, it's cooking a little slowly. I'm just going to turn up the heat a little bit. And I'm going to leave the top off so it can cook down a little bit better. Oh, it smells so good. Um, so yeah, Waldorf salad. I, I read this yesterday. It was started in the late 1800s at the Waldorf Hotel in New York City. And the story is that it was created by the maitre d' and it was just apples, celery, and mayonnaise. So it has changed over the years, which is good. <laughs> a little evolution is good, right? Um, so it, there's a lot of different types of Waldorf salads out there now. And usually you'll see it with walnuts, celery, apples, maybe some raisins, sometimes mayonnaise, sometimes a, a vinegar and oil or a lemon juice and oil-based 
uh, dressing. So I'm going to make it in that fashion here today. So I've got, uh, I'm like, I'll just use one turnip. Put more in if you're used to using them, if, if you know that the folks who are going to be eating them will like them. And if you're not sure, just start with one. So I'm just going to slice them thinly. And I'll mix it with some chopped apple. You could chop, you can slice these in any any way that you like. A little little chunks. You could chop them into nice little matchsticks. Whatever fun shape you want. And a nice crisp and kind of tart apple. So this happens to be a pink lady apple, which has oh, just become one of my favorite apples. The, it's crisp and tart. It's, it's a sweet, sweet tart kind of flavor. I think I'll chop these in a slightly different shape. You could also use a Granny Smith, the Macintosh. There's, a, there's an apple out there called Jazz, which is really nice as well. So really, whatever kind you like, but that, that crispy, sweet, tart uh, flavor really goes well with this salad. So some apple, a little more apple than turnip. Again, especially if you're just trying these for the first time and you're introducing new flavors to yourself or your family, start with little bits the best way. I think there is a, a well, um, often repeated a bit of wisdom out there that says it takes I don't know how many times, uh, many, <laughs> maybe a dozen or more, I don't know, before you start to get used to a new food. Um, if you have kids, you probably know that. You just keep offering the food, and then eventually they usually like it. So same with adults. We were the same way. You don't change too much. So I'm going to put this in my bowl here. And... Chop up some walnuts. Maybe about a half a cup is fine. If you, if you want to, you can roast your walnuts in the oven beforehand. And it's really easy to do that. You just pl pl put them on a baking sheet and put them in a 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes. And they roast really nicely. They cook more evenly if you roast them in the oven than in a pan on the stovetop because they're such a funny shape. They, they don't, you know, they get hot spots. They might get burned in some areas. So if you're roasting your walnuts, put them in the, put them in the oven. That's uh, much, much nicer. And uh, so there's walnuts. I'm going to throw in a couple of figs. These are dried figs. And they're, they're delicious. Um, Earlier we were talking, and it's like eating a Fig Newton without the cookie part. <laughs> so really nice. More nutritious than raisins. Higher in fiber, higher in a lot of minerals. And I just really like the flavor of figs so much better. You can find dried figs just about anywhere. Most, most grocery stores have them. Health food stores, Sprouts, Natural Grocers, they have them as well. Trader Joe's. So they're all over. I'll put my figs in there. I'm going to give my braise a little stir. Let that cook down a little bit more. Uh, so what do I have? I have my apples. I have my turnips. I have walnuts. I have figs. And I'm going to put in a little onion. So one of the fun things about this kind of shoulder season and spring veggies is onions look like this and they're fresh, they're sweet, and you can use the greens as well. So if you go to the market and you buy, you buy onions, don't throw away the greens. It's just like using a, a scallion. So they're, they're super sweet, they're really nice to eat. I'm gonna take a couple of leaves off and um, trim them a little bit here and then I'll just thinly slice them. I don't think I'll use all of this. So I just want a little bit of onion flavor. I don't want it to be overwhelming. And then we'll make a dressing. 
And the dressing is just some lemon juice, olive oil, salt and pepper. And then you can add other herbs. So mint is what I'll add right now, because I think that's unusual and it has a really nice bright flavor. But you could put in basil, you could put in tarragon, dill, parsley, lots of different fresh herbs will go with the salad. So here's my mint, also from the garden. One thing about this area is it's, it's a great environment to grow herbs. You know, or even just in pots on your patio. You don't need to have a garden. But I always love to have fresh herbs because they add so much nutrition, first of all, to your food. They're just packed with really important phytochemicals, and antioxidants, things that are anti-inflammatory. They add so much flavor and freshness to your food. So I just put a little bit, about half as much mint in there as the green onion. And then uh, a dressing. So I have a little bit of lemon juice in here, uh, about two tablespoons of lemon juice. I'm gonna put in a pinch of salt. Let it dissolve a little bit. And then a couple tablespoons of olive oil. So about half and half. One part lemon juice, one part olive oil. Oh. Half and half, so yeah, two tablespoons of each. And you can adjust that if you want it to be tartar, more lemony, put a little more lemon juice in. I'm gonna put in just a little bit of black pepper. So that's a standard, standard recipe for a vinaigrette right there. So shake it up. And then toss it with my salad. Smells great, fresh, bright, simple, delicious, all those good things. And it's beautiful too. Let me put it in a nice bowl. You could add other fruits and veggies to this. If you have celery, definitely throw that in there too. There you go. Easy, bright, delicious. You can also add, I did this last night, I just thought I would bring this in just to show you. There's this wonderful cheese called ricotta salada. It's a, it's a, a hard cheese, and um, the only place I know to get it in, in town is at Pangea, but it's a lovely grating cheese, and it just adds a bit of richness and umami to dishes. And I love it on salads of all kinds. So I would, uh, if you have it, it's just grate a little ricotta salada on there. You could also put it on this braise. Um, it's really, really nice. So when this is done, it is almost cooked down. The last step is to add just a little butter. And that just really increases the richness of the sauce. That's totally optional, but I highly recommend it because it's very tasty. <laughs> Um, and then soak up that sauce when you're eating it with some nice bread. You can also put this on some pasta. That would be yummy as well. Um, so yeah, so fennel and salad turnips. So make sure you stop by the Prescott Farmer's Market regularly. You know, it, things change all the time. And so watch the seasons change. Take advantage of the freshest and most delicious produce available. And you can get many more ideas on how to prepare seasonal produce on the Your Healthy Kitchen blog at YRMCHealthConnect.org. And be sure to follow me on Facebook at YRMC's Your Healthy Kitchen, where I regularly post photos and videos of the meals I make at home. In my own kitchen, it's, it's real-time seasonal cooking. Uh, plus, check out the links to my favorite food and gardening destinations on the web on my Facebook page as well. So until next time, eat well and be well, and we'll see you soon.